Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's new episode of X Vlog Live. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And folks, yes, Jez Corden will be with us momentarily. He's always casually late. Uh, that's just Jez's thing. Uh, I just got the DM with him. He sh- he'll be joining shortly, folks. Uh, as we wait for Jez Corden of Windows Central and the Xbox Two podcast to join. I mean, wow. Talk about news upon news upon news. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking about Obsidian's Grounded getting a a Forge mode. We're going to talk to Jez Corden about that because we know that he's played it. uh, And we know we're going to get his inside ear as, as to how this happened. And more importantly, will and can this happen to other Xbox franchises? Sounds sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, I know people have been talking about that. You know, they'd love to see you be able to build a Diablo, have a forge in Diablo, which would be kind of dope. Um, I would love to see a forge type level uh, or or, or uh, a for- type forge coming to the forces. Wouldn't it be kind of dope to play other people's tracks? I don't know if that's a thing, but I would like a forge level one where if you want to, let's say, make a, a gears level track or for instance a race on a halo ring that would be kind of dope um oh jez corden is here hey jez what's going on my brother how the heck are you hey. appreciate you being here bro you hear me okay yes you're looking you're looking great you sound great how are you feeling brother i'm feeling all right I'm feeling a bit feeling a bit tired um my sleep cycle's all over the place man i only just woke up and it's like it's like <laughs> It's like 5 p.m. here. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, good so, for you, man. So I'm, good for you. I'm on um I'm on like California time right now because oh, um boy. yeah uh, uh BlizzCon is on Friday and Saturday, so we'll be covering the hell out of that and stuff. But yeah, I'm doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. I just well, need it, it's of honestly. That, first of all, I want to say uh, the article you wrote yesterday on Clobriel's graphics. So you know Clobriel. Anyone that know anyone that's an Xbox fan knows who Clobriel is. He is one of the uh, prominent uh, members of the community, and he has a real good knack uh, to his uh, work that he does regarding, like, the artwork, the thumbnails that he makes, the the graphs that even Phil Spencer took time to mention during his interview. And you wrote a really interesting story because, you know, a lot of the times, Jez, when you're on with, you know, Grand uh, on a weekly basis and when you guys do the extra podcast, um, it's easy to who poo so to speak what xbox actually has in production and most of the stuff sure we know but there's a lot that we don't you have your ear to the floor i I would like to kind of touch on that for a hot second you know we're going to get into uh you're a big fan of gears you're a big fan of cliffy b like who isn't he thinks the series needs to be rebooted a la god of war um i want to get that i want to get your take on that i want to get the poll i want to throw a poll into the chat and see what the people have to say. I want to talk about Grounded for a second. They got a Forge mode coming. I think that is brilliant. Now, grant, folks, transparency time. I don't play Grounded. It's just not my bag. But millions of people, Jez, do. This is one of those gas games that uh, Sony was looking to hit on. And it took a lot of time and a lot of building and a lot of trust from Microsoft to allow Obsidian to say, hey, listen, you're a small team, go do this thing. And now it has ballooned into millions and millions of players and now getting a Forge mode. Let's start with that, Jez. Uh, a Forge mode is a something I was just literally saying before you got here. I would love to see come to other Xbox franchises, but Grounded is getting it very similar to, of course, Forge in Halo, which has seen a huge resurgence. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, one thing I really thought was, um, I think it was Forza Horizon 3 DLC, I want to say, the Hot Wheels DLC, Mm -hmm. and I think they did a Hot Wheels DLC in 4 as well, I think. Um, I was kind of like, man, 
it makes a lot of sense like if they would let you build your own tracks with this dlc because that's what hot wheels is all about it's, right? all it's like modular yes. putting tracks together and stuff like that and um but yeah it didn't happen i, I thought like um you know setting up your own races and stuff would be a no-brainer for a kind of open world kind of game as well um but yeah i think it will happen for forza to be honest and um you know, one of the one of the reasons why Halo Infinite's development was so fraught was because they did Forge mode was like absolutely key to the development of the game. Mm -hmm. And as we know, Forge mode didn't even ship with the game. They were sort of like, you know, it, it took extra development to finish that off and make it all work and all that kind of stuff. But in order to make Forge mode work, they had to build a whole new, the whole ass new engine, right? And also to make it way more powerful than previous iterations of Forge mode because they're competing with things like Roblox's creator mode and Fortnite has a creation mode now. And obviously there's Minecraft, which lets you basically expose all the game's code and code your own stuff into it. Even Overwatch has a, a sort of create your own map mode now. Um, you know, and, and this sort of concept of user-generated content is... It's a really great way to keep your game alive over really sort of long periods of time. And obviously we see this with Bethesda games a lot. Like they don't have like an in-game editor per se, but mm -hmm. they do have like a, a huge support for like injectors and, you know, more traditional mods. But then they have like, um, you know, the, the Bethesda creation kit stuff that's coming later for Starfield. So Starfield will have that kind of stuff as well. And it, it really is like Minecraft and Roblox that sort of continues this trend of user-generated content, which, you know, the industry calls it UGC. And uh, I think more and more games are going to get these kind of modes. So for Grounded, I suppose it was low-hanging fruit. You know, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you're essentially adding like, you know, hundreds of additional devs to the game because you know now that like everyone can make their own gameplay modes in these titles um all kinds of maps and modes and mods can come out of this kind of situation and uh it'll be interesting to see like how well it does for grounded and stuff i mean it doesn't always it doesn't always work as people in, uh, expect like i think epic games even said that the creation kit in fortnite actually reduced the amount that players were spending on microtransactions or something oh so wow. like so so for i'm sure i read that somewhere but so like if i if i if i'm not misremembering that that's kind of like you know if you if you implement these things poorly and your your sort of business model revolves around in app in and app in app purchases <laughs> and then you add a feature that makes people not want to spend on in-app purchases that could harm your business model right yeah. but for a game like grounded which you know doesn't have any in-app purchases anyway as far as i can remember at least it didn't when i last played it um i mean that could be like it'll it'll keep the game going and it'll keep people interested in buying the game at retail for a free-to-play game maybe it's not maybe it doesn't make as much sense unless you're heavily monetizing it like roblox does Roblox right. heavily monetizes their content, but I guess for Fortnite, maybe they screwed it up a little bit. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see how it goes for Grounded, and I expect more Microsoft games will get these kind of features in the future, due to generated content, yeah. Yeah, you know, look, the one thing I have to say that uh, I love about what Microsoft is doing is they are... Th th the plethora of different genres that they have available for gamers of such a wide audience, right? It, it, it's so wide. Uh, like, like I said, a game like Grounded is is not for me, uh, I, and I knew it wasn't. But if you look at like someone like Colt Eastwood, right? He played with his kids. He made this. Him and the kids made this like compound that was almost like a castle. Like you put it on the socials. And him and the kids had a, a, so much fun with it. And that's that's amazing to see, right? Like, you love to see that. And you're, you're right. You know, you, they're going to potentially add hundreds of developers to a game that started out with a team very small. Did not. It was a passion project, as we know. No one expected much from it. Now, look at it. Look, look how, how popular it has become. It's just, it's just one of those things that you love to see um, that in, in it in... 
in a, like a two or three year block, Jez, we're going to get the Starfields. We're going to get the Forza Motorsports. We're going to get grounded DLC. Halo is, is coming back. Next year looks like to be an epic year, uh, you know, from start to finish with potentially opening up with either Avowed or Hellblade. You got, you, you know, you, 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 you keep talking about Towerborn potentially being a sleeper hit. I, I see, I've, I've only seen it. I haven't played it like you. I'm, I'm, through the roof excited for that game uh, i cannot wait to play i think it's going to be one of those sleeper hits and it's an xbox exclusive which is fantastic uh and then of course you know clockwork revolution it was shown by in exile of several times it looks really polished i don't know if we get that next year or you know we who knows but that that's you know that's always a possibility um i am gonna say this i am happy for anyone that is a grounded fan I'm happy that anyone that likes to play that either a solo or online with their friends or even with their families. And the fact that it is getting this kind of uh, treatment where a forge mode is going to be added to allow for people's imagination to run wild. I think it's brilliant. I absolutely think it's brilliant. You know, Jez, I want to, I want to move on to, uh, 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 cause I know we only got you for about 70 minutes. So I want to make it count. Um, I'm interested now. I don't know how long you've been in gaming journalism. I don't know how many years that has been. Uh, I have an idea how long you've been with Windows Central, but I don't know specifically how many years you've been in, you know, reporting the news, you know, specifically when it comes to, in, you know, gaming. I mean, professionally, it'll be nine years in March. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, and then as a hobby, um, yeah, I suppose 11 years as a hobby. Wow. If you, if you count the two years I was doing it as a, as a sort of, you know, as, as a hobbyist, you know, a hobbyist website. Well, you got to actually um, hire. That's, that's bro, over a decade of anything is tremendous. So I want yeah, it's, your... it's been a blur. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it has. Um, I want to point your attention to what's been going on in Bungie. Um, obviously, the, we, we, we're going to we're going to we're going to kind of pick this apart a bit. Uh, my my question to you before I actually move on to some of the new information that has come out uh, regarding Marathon, which does not sound promising. Uh, the the game Matter, their other game they're working on, we have that has been confirmed as canceled uh, as of 2020. It just didn't say anything to anyone. Um, in all of the years that you have been covering uh, gaming, you know, gaming news. Uh, I'm just curious to find out if you've ever seen anything cr quite egregious as how their employees were treated on their way out the door. You know, I mean, we, oh, man, we, like it, it's I, yeah, I'm, I'm wanting because you you wear your heart on your sleeve when it comes to the people very much like myself, which is why I'm a big fan of yours. I'm so honored to actually have you here today. Um, let's talk about it, because I found it to be as a as a union guy, as a guy that worked for a, who had a union as a backer. Uh, my whole career as a cop, um, I felt so bad. Some of the stories that were coming out uh, were just heart crushing. Um, what 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 are your thoughts on this, Jets? I mean, there, I see this all the time. Like this 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 Bungie stuff. Like the way Bungie's treated its staff is is not out of the ordinary. Sadly, for the for the game industry, and that's why there's there's a lot of there's a lot of calls for the game industry to just unionize on mass in in a similar fashion to the way like Hollywood writers or Hollywood actors have unionized in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and there's, there's a similar call for the game the game industry to unionize on mass in this, this similar kind of way because um, the the industry and the shareholders. They have way they have a disproportionate amount of power over the the actual talent that makes the games we love you know um so um yeah unionize if you if you're game <laughs> game dev watching this um but um but yeah like the 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 stories coming out of bungie are, are very similar to the stories covered over the last couple of years coming out of meta um facebook gaming via the vr department especially like where that staff had discovered they'd been laid off when they turned up for work and their key cards had stopped working or they couldn't access emails anymore they weren't sort of given a formal process and um and also like we covered the i, I know this isn't gaming but windows central is more of a tech site you know with a side side order of gaming so we cover microsoft 
as an ecosystem that gaming ties into that. But like the the Twitter layoffs, Elon Musk's Twitter layoffs were notoriously brutal in a similar fashion, almost arbitrary, where they were just like laying off people left, right, and center for any any reason. Like, um, but like as far as gaming she goes, like Blizzard and Activision have also been notorious for this hire and fire culture where they they see like the they project what their fiscal is going to be like for the next year and like okay we can say we can boost our operating income by this much if we lay off this many people um and then it's like hang on you still need those people so like they lay off all those people to make their balance sheet look better for the next fiscal year and then over the next fiscal year they start quietly rehiring for those positions it's like it's it's manipulative for shareholders but that's how the kind of culture works and honestly it goes all the way to the top in america it goes all the way to the top because americans have very poor um employee rights compared to europe and and other places like in britain like they can't do that they can't just fire you or make you redundant and lay you off arbitrarily unless like the company goes full-blown bankrupt they have to do like what's called a, a um a redundancy consultation which can take weeks and actually like prove that you know that they're, they're they need need to lay you off you know and and that gives you that gives you time to sort of adjust and find a new job and that kind of stuff so like and it goes all the way to the top and and sort of like you know we could get really political with it and you know about like the way america pro- approaches its you know economic regulations and the 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 lack thereof in some areas you know and i don't want i don't want to get into that kind of stuff but um it is it is just a fact that like the 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 way that our economies are set up and it you know even though england or britain has all these extra protections it doesn't even go far enough there you know it's like the the shareholders and hedge funds and Wall Street and and uh, and the way that we've set up our companies is um, fundamentally omits the humanity, the human equation. You know, so why yeah. unions are so important, and why I'm you know I'm a big I'm a supporter of unions as well. So it's the only way unionization is the only real mechanism you've got to sort of really push back against corporate interests and these like absurdly inflated c-suite salaries that we see like ceos and you know and these higher up executives get is completely absurd and disproportionate when all their jobs really is to push money around you know um and it's like it's like a it's a big it's a big sort of club and if you're in the club then great you know but if you're not in the club you end up getting screwed and you get laid off and and all this kind of stuff. And no matter what your contributions are, some of the people laid off at Bungie and and other gaming companies, like, you know, whether it's from whether it's EA or Activision or or even Microsoft. Microsoft had its massive masses of layoffs this year, too, you know. And you we've seen people at Microsoft who were laid off. I I, I read a horror story on LinkedIn from from this year where Microsoft had laid someone off weeks after they'd moved their entire family to Redmond to work at Microsoft HQ, and then they'd Jesus. laid them up. They, they'd upended their entire life to go and work at Microsoft's headquarters. And then Microsoft had, you know, some algorithm or something that decided this is a good person to lay off. You know, it's, wow. it's dehumanizing, it's, yep. it's sickening, and what can you do, you know? We, we fundamentally, this will keep happening without some serious change or serious, you know, you, like nationwide unionization in america and and you know britain britain needs it too you know and here's what it is man it's it just really sucks but it goes to show that um i think like from a gamer perspective and from our perspective it goes to show that in a year like 2023 and potentially 2024 when there's so many so much competition so many triple a games to play games as a service can really lose out you know and that's ultimately why this has happened is because they're projecting that destiny next year will not 45% be percent uh, reduction in in what they thought would yeah. there yeah 45% that's yeah, so 
they 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 um they screwed up a few expansions they screwed up the online service or whatever and people aren't happy playing it and like there's so much other things to play so it's like yeah. well, why would i stick around for this you know um and uh you know I, i've i seen it happening you know in other games that i play you know because i play a lot of games service games like world of warcraft's never recovered from from the few years it had a bunch of low budget expansions and world of warcraft's never recovered to that level that it used to be at you know it's mm-hmm. it's still it's still a viable business but it's just never been where it was you know back in the wrath of lich king days and stuff like that um but the thing about Warcraft is it's got a monthly subscription fee, you know, and and Destiny does not. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, with without the players spending in the Eververse, um, Destiny is not a great business model compared to like it's trying to be an MMO without the subscription, and I don't think that makes no sense. I, it's no, never really make- worked. Yeah, so it's like a pre. You have to really think about it. Destiny is basically the only MMO that has a sort of the the business model that it does, where it's like, yeah, dedicated servers, connected online world, dedicated servers cost a lot of money, yeah. um, a lot of a lot of overhead. It's also photorealistic. So whereas like a lot of other MMOs, they use stylized graphics, which you know are cheaper to produce quickly so like when you get an expansion in world of warcraft you get mountains of content because it's visually the game the game engine's 20 years old for god's sake (laughs) so like it's 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 quicker to put together a graphics asset for world of warcraft than it would be something more photorealistic like destiny or something more you know i'm not i'm not denigrating world of warcraft because like their animations and riggings have gotten a lot better over the years but like when you got Destiny, which is like photorealistic and everything's got to like look a certain way, it's more expensive to create photorealistic art assets. It just is. So you've got that overhead too going for it, going against it rather. And then like as well, you build these expansions. It takes ages and ages and ages. And then there's no ongoing subscription fee to pay for those overheads like there is in World of Warcraft. I think Destiny is fundamentally a flawed business model. And I think what we're seeing is a sort of, Maybe a realization. I think Destiny needs to fully pivot to free to play. I know Destiny has like this free to play elements with loads of restrictions, but I think it needs to go fully free to play and look at what Warframe's doing yeah. and look at what some other successful kind of free to play MMOs are doing. Because I don't think I don't think I don't think Destiny's business model works. You know, and I think that's why Microsoft didn't buy them. I think that's yeah, why Microsoft that's, didn't buy them. We're gonna, we're gonna actually I actually gonna ask that question, but not so much the Microsoft question. Uh, look. Again, we we heard what happened, and of course, my heart goes out to anyone that is affected. Uh, one of the things that I have to say again, shout out to Clobriel, who uh, immediately jumped on the socials and put a bunch of links out there for a lot of the Xbox game studios that are hiring. Uh, turn uh, Turn Ten was hiring, I believe. Um, uh, Undead Labs was at one hiring, I believe. Uh, someone from Bethesda, one of their managers, reached out. Uh, you know, did a post on so on the socials. Hey, we're hiring over at Cinemax, you know, send your resumes. Uh, I, I love seeing how the doors are opened. Uh, I know Xbox does it a lot, but I'm not saying other companies don't, but Xbox is definitely one of the ones. I, it look, I mean, I will say this, uh, 343, uh, I, ho- I hope, uh, looks at a lot of the folks that were laid off. Um, I mean, just, look, I mean, s- some of the talent that was laid off is just unbelievable. Like Salvatore, who basically did all of the soundtrack for Halo 2, one of the most infamous of the, of the of the Halos, and he, that guy was that guy's a legend, uh, and he he was laid off. Uh, the, the the woman that actually created the Halo logo and it was was let go. Just, that what? Why? I don't understand. Uh, probably because they're making a lot of money. Uh, but just here's here's the question, and I don't know if you can answer it. I don't know if anyone can answer it. We'd have to ask Sony. After hearing that, okay, so let, let me bring up who, who actually said this. Now, let me just go back into the DMs for a hot second, and let me pull up actually mine. Okay, so um, now, according to Destiny Tracker, right, that is a, that is a, des- a very, very uh, uh, popular Destiny uh, 
uh, you know, Twitter account. They have 267.1 thousand followers. Uh, so they, 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 they're, they're kind of on the pulse of destiny. Uh, they reported uh, yesterday that um, a, a streamer, a YouTuber. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his. It's Aztec Karos. Uh, no, Aztec Cross. I think that's how you pronounce it. He is a Twitch streamer. Um, and he had actually, and again, he's, he's, well, he's very popular as well. He has 187.3 thousand followers. Uh, I, I can only imagine what his, uh, Twitch stream is, how many, you know, subs he has there, but just, he, he reported two very, very damning things. Uh, one was that, um, Bungie had shown off marathon to a bunch of streamers, uh, I mean, a lot of them. And they asked the question, Jez, if Marathon were to release tomorrow, would you be interested in playing? And again, he's, he didn't reveal who his source was, but he said his source is trusted and has given him good information before, and I have no reason not to believe him. And when asked this question, uh, the, the, they said, you know, raise your hands if you'd be interested in playing this. Not one person in the room raised their hand, Jets, um, which makes sense why it has been delayed until 2025. And, of course, this morning we have learned that the other game that Bungie was working on called Matter uh, has, as a matter of fact, uh, been canned since December of 2020. It's just that they never said anything. So... They're working on the, the the Destiny expansion. That's been delayed until 2024. Um, uh, the, the, the other game has been delayed till 2025. When you see this this dysfunction happening at Bungie, do you think that's do you think that this this panic buy of Bungie by Sony uh, you know was they're looking at this now as maybe a, a, a mistake? I don't think they think it's a mistake, but I think like there might be, I think there might be questioning some of the the higher ups judgments, maybe, especially because like obviously they 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 gave Sony a set of projections that just weren't based in reality. It seems mm -hmm. like I won't be surprised if 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 Sony takes more of a active role in the future of that company. Um, you know, I so some people were sort of like. Matt Booty recently uh, took responsibility for the output of Zenimax and Bethesda, right? So, um, some people, I, I don't know if this is true. Um, personally, I don't believe it to be true, but some people interpreted that as like, oh, Microsoft's taking a more active role in Bethesda because of Redfall, right? Um, and maybe it is true, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Sony does take a more active role in what Bungie's doing after this because you know sony has a bunch of studios that have proven to be ridiculously consistent right and one of the growing pains that you have when you expand is like how do you integrate those studios and i think it was actually was it sean Layden? it might have been sean La sean Layden actually in a recent interview and sean Layden, of course now works at tencent um, but obviously he's a very famous PlayStation figure from back in the day. Um, I think, and I'm paraphrasing, and I might be misremembering, I don't, I don't have research notes here with me right now, but I think it was Sean Layden who said something along the lines of, acquiring companies is easy, integrating them is hard, you know. So um, uh, one, of the, one of the big challenges Microsoft's going to have is, is sort of integrating all of its studios and and I think Sony's seen aspects of this now, like uh, reportedly Fire Sprite, which is another Sony acquisition, they're having major problems right now. And yeah. some of their C-suite executives took their golden parachutes and bailed. Yeah, and now lost 100 the, people now, since. Yeah, and now the studio's in disarray because a lot of the people that they, um, a lot of people who had shares who made money, they've now left the company. And we're starting to see this a little bit from Microsoft too. Like Pete Hines has left, uh, and retired from Bethesda, and you know, and when you've got that bag, and you've got like millions and millions, of, millions of dollars potentially in the bank from having sold your company, um, and I don't know if Pete Hines had a, a mountain of shares. I don't know what his finances looked like, but I would assume that he did, 
get a decent amount of cash out of out of that sale, you know. Um whether whether through his own stock or, or some kind of like bonus or something, but um but even still he's been very successful in the industry. Like why do you stick around in that situation? Like I always I always think this to myself. Like if I if I was someone who had shares in a company and I owned equity in that company and then it, it had sold to a bigger conglomerate for millions and millions of dollars, I wouldn't stick around. I'd be gone, baby. I'd be like, you know, I'd be I'd be out of there. Like I do you not enjoy work. Company, so, you know what I'm saying? You yeah, might start another screw company. That. I, <laughs> screw that, man. I do not enjoy work. I'd be gone, man. I'd be on a I beach with a with a nice little white Russian or something, drinking and stuff. But um but nah, I I think like um I think it's, I don't think it's a crisis though. Like social media tends to blow things out of, out of proportion. Like for example, with regards to marathon, going back to your original question, I actually had a second source reach out to me because we covered the story, we covered the comments about um the streamers saying they wouldn't play marathon. Um I just just inhaled a beard here, I think, or something. Um I had a, I had a second source reach out to me and he said something like, um, I was at that event, you know. I won't say who it is, but they're they're an extremely trusted source and they're someone I trust and someone I'd call a friend to. And um they were like, uh I was at that event, the event that they're talking about, and the context is heavily exaggerated, what they were saying. Bungie mm. was super clear this that it was pre-alpha footage, that it was pre-alpha gameplay, and that the game was years away. And that when they asked the question, would you play it tomorrow? Um, it was almost like put forward in a in a sort of you know, purely a feedback gathering uh, mechanism. And it wasn't sort of like a hint that the game was going to come out anytime soon, you know? So I think like, I think some aspects of this story have sort of blown up because it is, it is a dog pile and everyone's mad at Bungie for various reasons. Destiny players are mad at Bungie for delaying, delaying the, the next expansion and also for the state of the game in general. And then they're mad too, because of the way the layoffs have been handled and very, you know, beloved industry figures and community leaders and people who actually engage with the players have been laid off. So there's a lot of anger, and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of clicks to be had by dunking on Bungie right now. But honestly, I think this marathon story is a bit of a nothing burger, personally. Okay. Um, and once I once I spoke to this source, you know, who 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 added uh, some important extra context, and also Tom Henderson from Insider Gaming, who's obviously very very well connected. Oh, yeah. uh, probably the best best connected insider in the industry right now today i would say um he he came back and said that like um the he'd uh, paraphrasing again but the fundamental gameplay loop was was solid so i wouldn't be worried about marathon just yet um and honestly i wouldn't be worried about sony in general they're going for a lot of turmoil right now and i think it's because i think it's because their margins are not looking great for 2024 so they want to improve, they want to reduce their their costs going into 2024 to make the stock look more attractive. I think that's where a lot of this is coming from. I don't think this is a result of like, oh God, we've screwed up really badly um, operationally. I think it's more like VR didn't hit as hard as they'd hoped. Um, some of their cash cows are seeing a downturn, Fortnite. Epic Games has reported that players are spending less in microtransactions, and obviously Fortnite is a huge driver of revenue for PlayStation and Xbox alike. Where while Xbox is diversifying out to mobile, Sony diversified out to VR, which I still think is a completely. I think VR is just a complete disaster as a, as a yeah, medium. And yep. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, and I don't think it. And this is this isn't me being a boomer. Like people just. People just don't want to wear a computer on their face. It's not rocket science, man. I don't even like wearing headphones. You want me to put a computer on my face? I don't want to do it. I don't even like wearing these. I don't even like wearing my glasses. You know, <laughs> you want you want me to wear a full blown computer on my head? No, thank you. Especially you know, to relax. It makes no sense. During yeah. the Xbox Two podcast last week, you had made mention, uh, which by the way, ph phenomenal show. That Facebook, Thank you. Meta, Meta, is losing millions of dollars per month on the VR. Billions, billions. With billions, billions, yeah, a quarter from VR. Yeah, so it's, it was a billion. 
Yeah, I mean, look, everywhere I go, I, you, you, I look, I'll say this about the Sony uh, headset. Uh, I was a, an adopter for VR for PlayStation VR uh, 1.0. I loved it. Uh, I enjoyed it so much that when they uh, upgraded it to, to to include the HDR pass through, I sold the old one and bought the new one. Um, one of the things that aggravated out the shit out of me was the fact that none of the games that I had, and I had them all physically, were backwards compatible. I, I actually yeah. have I have I, I, I have it? the I have the Meta uh, uh, two. I don't I didn't get the three. I, I got it. It's it's yeah. it's dusty. Yeah, I, I never use it because it's just not, it's just not fun, man. I just, it just sits there on my shelf gathering dust. Like it's literally dusty because <laughs> I just don't want to, when I want to relax, I don't want to wear a thing on my head. You know? Yeah, it's no, not it's true. It's that simple. Sorry. I, well, wear, but... I mean, listen, so, Sony's uh, in a pickle, uh, 2024, not looking really good for them. Um, and, uh, <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it, look, I, I'll, I'll say this, um, Bungie is a company, I mean, most of Sony's first party studios seem to have, uh, you know, lay, they're laying off people, uh, which is not good. Uh, the industry is making a lot of money. So I, I, I don't really understand <laughs> Jess Corn with the head, <laughs> with the 3d headset on. I love it. Um, does, is it working right now? Are you seeing us on, on live on the show, sir? How do I I'm, look? So, I'm seeing if I, I've seen if it's charged. You know, let's see if it's charged. It might have any <laughs> yeah. battery. But, you know, I like it's it's a fun novelty. You know, like it's like I hey, beat Saber is great. You know, you swing yeah, beat around. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, like there there's some pretty cool games for it. Like um, the Dark Walking Vader Dead game I enjoyed. Cool. Uh, that was pretty dope. I really like um, Arizona Sunshine and Pistol Whip. These games are really cool, but I play them for like. 20 minutes and i'm just like yeah i'm done. done i'll go back to diablo now oh yeah so i can see i can see i can see through it now you know it's it's got this this is the quest quest two i think yeah i have the two that's what i have yeah, yeah. i don't know man I well know. listen before we move on to uh the the uh, gears of war topic which i'm very interested to get your hot take on let me catch up on the super chats and we have a lot of channel men uh, membership messages here first one jacob novick who's been a channel member for five months, actually did not say anything. But Jacob, welcome to the program as always. Uh, Boss Mod Lethal Papa, folks, he's been a channel member. Holy matrimony, 49 months. That is just insane. He says, hope you and the missus had a great time for her birthday. Yeah, we did. We we ordered we ordered takeout. I had a nice little cake I made for her. Um, we had a nice dinner. Uh, we watched uh, that film Boogeyman. Uh, we like horror. And it was actually really good. Uh, we watched that. Um, and uh, that, that we called it a night, we, we kept it simple. I'll uh, be doing something over the weekend for her with her and her, uh, the rest of her family on Saturday, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, so thank you for the birthday wishes, uh, from everybody. But thank you so much for Lethal Papa. Uh, Sis Lord drops a very generous two dollars of chat and says, Jez and Boom together, the new and improved Xbox 2. Holy matrimony! Don't tell the, the man with a hundred thousand, a hundred, uh, hundred thousand subs, don't do that because uh, I love rant. Oh, we got to get Rand on here as well. Uh, P1553D uh, has been a channel member for three months. Thank you so much for that, dude. He says, I had a lot of fun with Grounded when I was playing it about a year ago. It was actually awesome. I might have to go check out the map creations. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, if you enjoyed the game, I think this is going to be a, a great addition. Uh, Maxi Komen, all the way from Argentina, Jez, says, greetings to Jez from his Twitter friend, from Argentina. So welcome. That is awesome, Maxi. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Drawn TJ, generous friend of the program, drops an outstanding $5 super chat and says, put Forge in Call of Duty so we can create maps free. Up the devs, let them create the next Call of Duty or make Prototype or other games. Yeah, I, I hope Prototype comes back in a big way. I mean, I, wa I watched someone playing it the other day, and I don't really like watch watching uh, people play games i'd rather play it myself but uh not only does the game still look pretty dope um a lot of the things you were doing in there i hate to say this you do in spider-man 2 i mean like i i think they stole i uh, stole borrowed a lot of the mechanics because the flying around in prototype that game is what, what 15 years old something like that 
uh, was actually very, very Spider-Man 2-like. I couldn't believe it. Um, Kay Asante, generous friend of the program, who has been a channel member for 18 months. Jesse has this question for you. Uh, great show, Boom. Salute to the great Jez C for speaking the truth about the, this corrupt power. More folks know and care about this stuff. And indeed, I mean, we, we, we love the real talk here. That's what we uh, hope folks tune in for. Uh, THX1138 drops a $2 super chat and says, Sony paid extra $1.2 billion for to Bungie to retain talent. Yeah, a lot of people are asking what happened there. Yeah, uh, someone got their golden parachute and left the company. That's probably what happened. We have a new channel member, NM156. Thank you so much for joining the channel. That's very kind of you. Highlander001, not only uh, Jez drops a $5 super chat, he has gifted five double barrel gaming subscription memberships. Thank you, brother. That is very kind of you. He says, great news. When my brother told his employees about me uh, about me helping the homeless guy, uh, um, uh, uh, well, our... Uh, Oh, uh, someone got him Call of Duty for him and copies uh, for my uh, two sons who played as well. Dude, that is very – I mean, that, that, if you didn't know, he he stopped. He uh, was able to get a, a homeless veteran a job, and he, he fed him, which is pretty amazing. We, don't, we need more people awesome. like you in the world, Highlander. That is amazing. Um, the last two Super Chats come the way of William Kurana. Drops a very generous $2 Super Chat and says – Xbox want to watch Blizz, uh, BlizzCon tomorrow exclusives. We're actually going to get to that. We're going to get to Jez and what he thinks is going to be there. Uh, Lady Foxfire drops a very generous $2 super chat and says, here for the Gears topic, staying for you and Jez. Thank you, darling. Appreciate you being here. Jez, let's talk about it. Uh, Clippy B uh, is inf infamous, right? Obviously, he was a part of, uh, of the coalition before it was a coalition when he was working with Epic Games, and they created Gears of War. I know it's a franchise that you know and love. He was recently interviewed, and, well, you know, he never disappoints because I love Chris, Cl Cliffy B, and, you know, a couple of months ago, he was actually on the Iron Lords where he dropped some big bombs. Um, he thinks, Jez, that Gears of War needs a reboot very similar to how Sony Santa Monica reboot God of War. What what are your thoughts on that? Because Gear Six, we don't know how close or how far away it is. Um, but you know, we know that they're the masters of Unreal Engine, which I'm sure that we're going to get a real a visual treat, you know, treat for our Gear Six or whatever it's going to be called. Where where do you kind of fall on the the you know quote unquote Gears reboot? Does it need a reboot? I mean, the God of, I thought the God of War reboot is really well done because. It's sort of like, it's kind of like, it's it's not like a full-blown reboot or a reset of the franchise or the timeline, right? It's sort of like a, a time skip that kind of yes. does sort of vaguely ref infer that the previous games did happen, maybe not in the way we remember them, but, you know, it's still Kratos, you know, and it's still, it might not be God of War, the reboot might not be God of War whatever i suppose it what it would be god of war 4 i think or Might 5 have been, or i can't remember because well you know they had two for the psp and they had god of war 1 2 and 3 for the playstation yeah so i suppose it would have been god of war 4 technically in the continuity yeah. but they they removed the number because they were introducing it to a new audience i think that's a great way to do it and i think like if you were going to do like a gears sort of soft reboot kind of thing i think a time skip and then some kind of time skip and then kind of like um a time skip and then uh a sort of new characters and then don't get rid of the old lore or the old the wars or the, you know the law like the pendulum wars and stuff like that don't do a full-blown remake of the timeline or whatever and restart it i think like a time skip could probably potentially help the game but also like I really like what Clippy B was saying about switching, trying to do a first-person Gears or something. I think one of the issues with Gears is, right, they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because the hardcore fans of Gears, they want it to be a very specific way. They want the multiplayer to have the, the specific wall-bouncing mechanics and 
and all that kind of stuff and the the gears they know and love and there's nothing wrong with that fundamentally the issue is that i think some of the some of that sort of pandering to the core is potentially holding the franchise back from reaching growth maybe i would say and like i think um one one thing that has worked well for gears up until now is that they they do reuse a lot of the assets and the animations and you know game over game and and you know like all the the chainsaw animations are all the same and you know it it was kind of like it was like it was one thing that really bugged me about the current gears story arc is that they sort of act like there's this new enemy coming or whatever but and then you find out like it's like a bait and switch it's like oh there's a there's a new enemy there's a new enemy and then it's like oh hang on it's just the locust again but a little bit different you know kind of thing. um so but like what we saw in the gears of war dlc the gears 5 dlc hive busters is there is a wider planet out there with different kind of animals and different kind of cultures and threats potentially and that kind of stuff I think gears like the next gears I'm hoping will be really really ambitious and really sort of reimagine what gears can be on a bigger scale. I think they were kind of definitely moving to a more wide linear format with the the vehicular expanses and you know the little side quest you could do and the soft RPG mechanics with customizing Jack's abilities and stuff like that. I hope they double, triple down or quadruple down on the, some of that stuff and make it more mass effect even like i thought mass effect 2 is mass effect 2 and 3 of like they have such great um structure for a game of, uh, for a third person shooter i think because it is at the end of the day it's a third person shooter right, right. but there's a lot of depth in the classes you can play there's a lot more depth in the squad gameplay there's a lot more abilities you can use and and all this kind and of stuff weapons. and there's also side weapons way more yeah. weapons in mass effect and there's also like um way more locations because you know they are traveling around the galaxy um but hive busters showed that there is potentially other biomes that could be explored on sarah and and stuff like this so i think what gears needs is um a bigger budget more ambition and i think it could be like if if god of war is kind of like playstation's halo maybe gears can be um gears can be xbox's horizon where it's more like mm, interesting. you know open world and and sort of fantastical maybe but um you know i still want it to be this sort of dark gritty sort of dangerous world sarah is a dangerous planet you know where humanity sort of exists on the fringes of what is ultimately a, a very violent planet you know and then the hu human factions there have been very violent to each other as well so it's yeah. a it's a planet ravaged by war and the wars in the the clues in the name right so i'd like to see a little bit more of that and some of the you know the epic war scenes or some of the most epic scenes in in um in the gears franchise are the sort of like where you're fighting through destroyed cities and there's huge monsters popping off and all that kind of stuff i think that's fundamental to gears but i also think like there is an opportunity to expand it beyond what we typically know about gears and potentially appeal to a wider audience and bring in more players and be a system seller that gears used to be in the 360 era so yeah i'm i've heard good things about the next gears man like people keep teasing me like sources tease me about the next gears and, and they say things like you're not ready for the next gears and stuff like this so you know and that that might be might be them exaggerating and stuff but i'm I'm hopeful that the next gears is is going to be that kind of next step but um i think like when they do finish this story arc and i think they should finish this story arc before they do a reboot maybe then you do a time skip uh, a spin-off with a with first person shooting different genre and and maybe then you do a time skip with a new arc and new characters and that kind of thing um uh but yeah i, I think like i don't i wouldn't reboot it now in the middle of a story arc but right. i do think it, it's coming up to that point where they need to move away from you know your marcus phoenix family and all that kind of stuff 
You know, well, one of the things you said that was pretty interesting is that you talk about Sarah, right? Um, that's the only planet that we know, but that can't be the only planet that exists, right? I would love to see an, a real evolutionary look into a wider lens. I mean, I don't know how 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 uh, Hive Busters fared for you. I thought Hive Busters and the three characters were absolutely amazing. They were all wacky personalities, very similar to what you got with you know the group that was with you know in, in the, the the first Gears trilogy. Uh, and I I would love to see more like that. I mean, I say this about Halo all the time. I, I think that there is a world where, and I'm not talking about like a Forge world. I'm talking about like legitimately people on 343 getting together to make a survival horror-esque Halo game on uh, Zeta Halo with the Flood. You know, you can, I, I've told the story before, Jez. I don't know if you've ever heard it, but I like the idea of an ODST level story told in third person. Like a survival horror game, you're a scientist. You're on Zeta Halo. The 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 accident happens. The flood gets loose, and now you got to get to where they're gonna they're gonna pick you up. The, they're gonna rescue you, and you got to get through it. You're not a soldier. You're a scientist. You find a gun. You find a second gun, and it's and you can make it third person. I think that would be brilliant. I think that would be something fresh and new for Halo that we've never seen before. Because unfortunately. As mag magnanimous as as ODST was, we haven't seen anything like it since. And I'd love to see them return to that. And going back to you know to Gears, I thought Hive Busters was ex extremely well received. Came out of completely nowhere, told an incredible story. Right, new characters. Everyone cared for the characters, and we don't. And we this just we don't know what's going to happen. I, I I would love to see them expand and being that they have so many games in production there's no rush it doesn't have to be gears forza and halo they have so many studios they can let these things cook and they could bring new ideas one of the things that phil spencer's known for as you know is letting people uh make what they want to make they they make when someone is passionate about making a game well you see what happens with that um, so I'm I'm hoping uh, like that that, that we, we we see that kind of uh, that kind of uh, creativity come to gears because like I said I know the next gears I've heard some things and I heard I just like you very vague uh, that's gonna completely blow my mind I no one's told me I'm not ready for it because I'm ready for anything gears but um, look at the end of the day folks I'm here we're here we're here for the long haul and Xbox gamers are eating really good uh, the future is incredibly bright. But Jez, I, I I got to get your hot take on what is happening tomorrow and Saturday, which of course you will be covering, and that of course is BlizzCon. Now you had said something a couple of weeks ago on the Xbox Two. You were sloughed, uh, like like you like that you, that you're known for you and 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 Randall Thor, um, regarding Xbox gamers need to tune in during the the opening ceremony. Do you have an update on that? Have you heard anything? Can specifically Xbox players potentially get something special at BlizzCon 2023? I don't know about something special, and I really don't want to overhype this and say, like, there's going to be an Xbox exclusive announced at BlizzCon, because I don't think that's the case. Like, some people have said, some people have sort of, Taking taking my comments to to extreme places where it's like, oh, Odyssey is going to be announced and it's going to be Xbox exclusive. Odyssey being Blizzard's survival game they've got coming up, which is similar gameplay loop to Fallout seventy six, but in the Overwatch engine. Which I don't think I've said before. Like the game is in the built built in the Overwatch engine, from what I know. Um, so uh, yeah, I I think we will see Odyssey, but I, I personally don't think it's going to be an Xbox exclusive. I will say, however, that I've, I've heard that Xbox does have a presence at BlizzCon in some form. I'm just not sure what form that takes. Like, is Xbox going to be delivering a keynote speech or they're going to be involved in that or they're going to just sort of, you know, watch from the wings and sort of be like, you know, we um, uh, sort of maybe sort of talk to people on the ground rather than try and get fully involved or, or, or act like they're stepping on people's toes. Because uh, last week, we obviously 
we did see that Phil and the senior leadership team at Xbox, Sarah Bond, Matt Booty, they were at BlizzCon to meet. They were at Blizzard in uh, Irving, uh, Irvine, California to to uh, meet and greet and take feedback and you know just introduce themselves, I guess, since then they're now they're now part of Xbox and all that kind of stuff. So um, I do think Xbox will have a presence there, and I do think it's going to be worth watching for Xbox fans. I just don't know what form that's going to take. I've just kind of been I've been hinted that I've been hinted the same thing basically. Like if you're an Xbox fan, you'll want to watch, you'll want to keep an eye on the BlizzCon proceedings. You know, so um, I don't know if that's going to take the form of announcements or just like maybe an appearance by, you know, maybe Matt Booty or someone like that. I don't know, but um, we'll see. And um, I'm pretty excited about BlizzCon as a Blizzard fan mainly because I think like we're going to see we're going to see a new Diablo expansion, first Diablo paid expansion announced. We're going to see next World of Warcraft expansion announced as is tradition. Who knows, man? Like we could see them acknowledge StarCraft to bring that back, be a big surprise. We could see Odyssey announced. Um, we could see any manner of things. Like there's this huge blocks of the the key the the introductory keynote is two and a half hours long i don't wow. feel like you can fit yeah i don't think you can fit like <laughs> uh, warcraft diablo hearthstone and warcraft rumble and i don't think you can fit like that much i, I think i feel like you need more games to fit in two and a half hours maybe i'm wrong but um I do think it's going to be a really exciting show, and yeah, we're going to be covering the hell out of it on Windows Central. I'm pretty really excited about it. This yeah, is my uh, E3. Yeah, I, well, you're you're well, obviously if, if you know Jess Corn, you know you're a huge WoW fan. You're a huge Blizzard fan. I know you were very happy with the deal happening because obviously there is, you know, I think I think Blizzard going forward is going to continue to shine and do some special things. Uh, now that they are owned and operated under Microsoft. Um, Elders uh, Bane in the chat says, "Will Uncle Phil be there?" Yes. What do you think? Um, who knows? Yeah, hard to say. <laughs> I mean, he's been everywhere. Hard I mean, I mean, you saw you saw that he was uh, making pancakes for charity. Yeah, he had on the uh, the Master uh, hey. Chef uh, thing, which was pretty cool. Uh, I, he I travels a lot that. lately, Phil. He's, he's, he gets around. He gets around. Yeah, he's yeah, he's here, there, and everywhere. Listen, uh, Everborn Saga, who you know, uh, asked me to ask you, and with, being that we're talking about Blizzard, how long before we start to see a Blizzard integration into some of their strengths and talents for Xbox Game Studios? Because you did see that one of the producers or one of the artists that works on the cinematics for Diablo wants a shot at working on gears. Um, how long do you think that that is going to take to happen that you're going to, we're going to start to see, you know, some of the, you know, the studios from blizzard from Activision, uh, you know, bleed into Xbox game studios. I mean, one of the, one thing blizzard does really well is they have an in-house cinematics team, right? And Blizzard cinematics are the best in the industry, yeah. even now. You know, like I know a lot of people like Blur is the Blur does the Halo stuff, and they do a really great job. But I'm sorry, man. Like Blizzard's just on another level with this shit. Like if you if you go and go and look at some of the the cinematics they did for Battle Ro Battle of Azeroth, like absolutely immaculate, incredible. And Blizzard's sort of known for its in-house cinematics, like the the full, the, the full pre-rendered stuff, you know. Um, so I really love the potential that we could see out of that team, you know, uh, expanding and then moving across the entire sort of portfolio, potentially, you know. Um, but this is really specialized stuff, and it's kind of like, well, how many how many people out there could really potentially contribute to some of this stuff? I don't know, you know. Um, the dude was saying he'd love to work on some Gears of War cinematics and stuff, and and that's like it's an exciting possibility, isn't it? But I can't help but wonder, like, he's he's probably going to have his hands full with everything that Blizzard's got cooking, right? So I think like it depends, like, what Microsoft 
where Microsoft wants to really go with its investment, like that, there's a lot of teams at Blizzard that sort of they're handled in such a way to maximize shareholder profits at the end of the day. But Microsoft's a very different company, and the way Microsoft share Microsoft shareholders like they do not care about gaming. Like in the keynote speech, um, at the at the quarterly speech, um, the quarterly investors call. Sorry. Um, recently, there was no questions about Xbox at all, even though they just acquired ABK and they they were reporting that Xbox's revenue is going to grow by forty percent next quarter as a result of it. They still don't care about Xbox. They're only interested in Azure, right? Right. So, but that's good. That's a good thing in a way because it's sort of like it sort of shields Xbox from the same kind of hire and fire and and squeeze culture that we often see we've seen from bungie and we've seen from activision blizzard in the past you know and that's not to say xbox doesn't get layoffs but they're usually as a result of microsoft wide layoffs like it wasn't just xbox that had layoffs this year it was linkedin it was uh, even azure had layoffs and stuff like that so whereas like i kind of feel like phil feels phil probably feels very blessed that He's in such a position now where he can sort of, it's almost like he can help the the developers under him potentially realize their dreams. Like a game like Pentiment doesn't get made under Activision. A game like Pentiment doesn't get made under a, a publisher like EA. Maybe EA would like do it as a one of their EA original indie publishing deals or something. But um, as, a, as a first party platform studio, I could not see PlayStation putting out a game like pentiment because they're, they're sort of like they want to make sure that that they're sort of known for triple a bangers because that's what their shareholders want whereas xbox like isn't as beholden to shareholders directly in the same way that some of these other companies are so this is sort of a roundabout way of saying like microsoft could potentially invest in these teams they could grow these teams they could spin up a, a starcraft team they could spin up deeper integrations between um, you know, Xbox and Blizzard games, you know, we could see uh, Halo DLC and Overwatch. I totally think that'll happen eventually. Um, and we could see Overwatch, you know, inspired DLC in Halo Infinite, maybe. All this stuff, I think, is going to happen over time. But it will take years to realize. But, like, don't expect any of this integration to happen overnight. It's going to take years. Like, Blizzard's got their next fiscal completely planned out. But like after 2025, 26, 27, who knows where this all could all go? It could, it's, it's, it's so the possibilities are endless and super exciting, I think. So, last question for me. Someone asked it in a couple of people actually asked it in the chat. What are the chances of WoW hitting Xbox? Very high, I think. I used to say, like, I used to be of the opinion that it would never happen back in the day because. Again, it's the shareholders sort of you have to convince shareholders that there's an opportunity with well on console. And I think like I think the opportunity for well on console would require a lot of investment that I don't think Activision was willing to make. Things about WoW would have to fundamentally change for it to work on console. Personally, I think like for 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 one thing, World of Warcraft is heavily dependent on user interface mods. Uh, which you can't get on console, right? Um, so one thing Blizzard has been doing over the year, over recent years has been to improve the UI, the user interface in World of Warcraft to the point where you don't need as many mods to play the game. Um, and this, this is one, like, a unique thing that WoW does is they allow programmers to add things to the interface, and you can download these interface mods. But some of them are so powerful that they have to design the difficulty of the game around these mods. So that doesn't work on console where you don't have those mods. So either what they do is they have separate servers for console, the console version, which is what I think they should do. Mm. And then like if you've got separate servers, you can tune the bosses to be a little maybe less difficult in an environment where you don't have access to damage meters and all those kind of mods that um really help you fine tune your performance in wow but i think under activision it wouldn't have happened 
but I think under Xbox it probably will happen because it adds a lot of value to Game Pass. And I think like what they could what they'll do is like they'll be like you get perks if you've got Game Pass. Maybe you get a few months free per year with Game Pass. I don't think they'll put the web subscription into Game Pass completely because the business model depends on that subscription. But I think what what they'll do is they'll use Game Pass as a marketing vehicle for it and be like you get three three months for free or something like that, which is what they do for some of their other games. Um, like you get you get three months free of Minecraft Realms, for example, which is Minecraft subscription if you've got Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Um, but also I think like it gives it gives Xbox another major game, you know. Um, and I think World of Warcraft could work really well with a controller, um, especially now that you can map keyboard controls to the Elite controller. Yep. I think it will happen. It's just a case of how long will it take and what form will it take. I think it would be a mistake to throw everyone in the same servers, but at the same time, it's kind of like, will WoW on console, on Xbox, have enough players if they don't do that? I think like... I think they should do that, and it should be its own version. And I also think they should release it on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation as well, if they are going to do it. I don't think it should be exclusive, because it won't have enough players. I think like they really need to... If they do do it, it needs to be on everything, mm. but with maybe perks for Xbox Game Pass members. But yeah, I think it will happen. I think it will I love it. Happen. I love it. Uh, someone mentioned... Uh, I don't know whether you remember this from back in the days. Uh, StarCraft Ghost... Uh, that's uh, that's yeah, that yeah, vaporware yeah. that was on the N64 that uh, was uh, going to be a third-person uh, shooter. I, that That's something that I'd love, 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 love to see them reach all the way back into their nostalgia uh, box and pull out and potentially give that to a team uh, like a Ninja Theory would be dope. But yeah, obviously, that would probably be handled by uh, the teams at Blizzard. Listen, Jez, it was a great hour and uh, just about 10 minutes. So, as uh, again, 70-minute show, a little bit smaller. Don't forget tomorrow, folks, uh, we are going – we're doing our uh, fourth annual Mrs. Boom's birthday bash, and uh, her and I are giving away $500 worth of gift cards. That's right, 10 $50 gift cards. Uh, I'm uh, creating that show. I'm writing that show right now. I'll have the hashtag. I'll drop it on the socials. All you got to do to be entered is be in the chat. Throw that hashtag in the chat, and we'll let the picker from, of course, StreamYards pick the winners. The first five winners, folks, are going to be channel members. The second five winners are, of course, going to be anyone that is in the live chat. Uh, we're going to have a great show tomorrow. Again, I'm not even sure what the what the lead title is going to be. I'm literally writing the show as we speak. But Jess Corden of Windows Central and, of course, the Xbox 2 podcast, we are looking forward to your coverage of BlizzCon to, uh, tomorrow and, of course, Saturday. Um, uh, when is the Xbox 2 podcast happening? Yeah, so Xbox 2 is Friday at okay. uh, oh, 15, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. Okay. So... But because the the clocks have changed in Europe, we're an hour earlier than usual, I think. So for the next for this week, we'll be an hour earlier in Europe. Okay. But at the same at the same three PM Eastern. So we'll be uh going live at eight PM in Germany and seven PM in the UK uh tomorrow on Friday. But yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's a you're on a tight ship here, right? You know, me, me and Ran, like we're so we're so bad at like speaking <laughs> concisely that the shows end up being four hours long, even though like we basically I, cover the I same amount the show. of I, I, you know, you guys are with me uh, when I'm cleaning, when when I'm doing stuff around the house. I'm like, oh great, a four hour <laughs> show. This is wonderful. And you know what? I, I get a chance to do what I have to do, which is what I was literally doing, folks. I was mopping right before I went live, and I just you know cooled down, drank some water, and here we are. Uh, shout out to uh, Darth Sin in the chat. Says great show, Christopher Wallace. He says no first person shooter for Gears. I mean, listen, that that's fine. Um, but look, folks, Double Barrel Gaming is now three hundred and ninety one subscribers away from fourteen k. Now, of course, we're not at the hundred k plus that Randall Thor, but we, you know, we're only doing this a couple of years. Uh, if you're new, and there's a lot of new names here, I do ask. I humbly request that you consider subscribing. Please 
Uh, listen, I do this five days a week, Monday through Friday, all different shows, all different panels, all great content. We never use hate mongering to get your click, your like, or your sub. Uh, obviously, we, you know, I do all the research myself. I write all my own scripts. And like I said, I do this Monday through Friday. I love it. I'm retired. This is why I can do this. Uh, Jez Corden, it was an honor and a pleasure to work with you. Uh, we definitely got to do this again. And again, maybe or just, I'm throwing this out to the ether. That I get to be the Xbox 2 plus 1 in the future. That would be kind of dope. I think that we, uh, I'd love to be a part of something like that. And, of course, thank you for all the, the, you know, the, 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 the great content you do not only through your writing and 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 your journalistic integrity that you put out there, but of course what you do with Randall Thor each and every week on the Xbox 2. Folks, that's going to do it for Xbox Live, for Jez Corden, for myself, and of course for Double Barrel Gaming. We thank you for taking the time to hang out with us for a little bit over an hour. Uh, again, tomorrow morning's Breakfast at Boom is going to be our fourth annual uh, Mrs. Boom's Birthday Bash. We're giving away $500 worth of gift cards, 10 $50 gift cards. Awesome. And, uh, and, and real quick, even if you are outside of the Americas, folks, and you win, we get you the prize. The only, the only caveat is that we use PayPal, and we will send you the money. And if there's a fee for a transfer fee, we pay that. Sorry about the sirens in the background. Uh, if you are, of course, if the, de the money denomination is higher in your country, we pay for it. You literally pay nothing. And if you win, well, you win. One of the few shows that actually uh, reach out our, our arms to the world and everyone that supports this channel gets supported back. And, of course, a big thank you to all the channel memberships. A big thank you to all of the Super Chats that came in today. Obviously, those power the show and allow us to do the big giveaways. And, uh, of course, I'm going to close out the show with something that's incredibly important to me, folks. Hopefully, one day, it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, Craig, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, Craig. I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of X-Vlog Live. Hey.